Hey guys, Indy here, and I find this My 30 Day of World list kind of interesting, so I wanted to get into it a bit. I'm not going to do it very structured. I mean, it's already the 2nd of April. I'm just now starting to get to it. Um, been sort of busy, sort of not. Um, let's start off with the first question. Uh, what is the 30 second elevator pitch for my setting? I've never had one. Um, I guess I would say, um, if I was to tell someone, I would say, hey, it's a it's a fairly typical fantasy world, except for some of the tropes are twisted or just something else turned on their heads. Um, low frequency of magic, but magic can be very powerful. Um, and lots of mixed races possible not necessarily like population size but uh in options that might be 30 seconds maybe it's not now why do i not have a 30 second pitch for my setting because i've never tried to attract anyone to my table from setting since i've almost always only ever run role master and over here is it over here no it's over here I have the list. I, I made this up for the last RPG a day just so that people, I wouldn't have to keep saying what my experience is in. Um, but Role Master is mostly what I've always run. Um, so my pitch is almost always about the system, the setting being secondary. Um, so I have never developed a 30 second pitch or any kind of pitch for my setting at all. Um, normally I just start telling people about my setting one if they have questions one if they have questions about joining my campaign in the first place or two if they've already agreed then when we need to start building characters they need to understand the setting which takes me to the number two the 321 question what is the name of my world now I've never named it um, I kind of thought at first like in my simulationist tendencies, I was thinking, well, the different cultures and the different languages would have different names for the planet anyways. Why am I going to come up with one? They'd all call it something different. And also, do would people actually address their setting as something? They don't know it's a setting. They, they don't, you know, maybe they have some beliefs about there being other worlds or whatever, but how much is that really going to materialize until they see another set, another world, they go to it, they travel to another plane or something like that, then they can need to start worrying about name, really naming and codif codifying the name, should we say, of their home plane. So I never came up with a name for the setting either. Um, it's more recently than I've, than I've thought, uh, you know, maybe I could write all this stuff up and publish it and use it for something or... If I want to get a, a thing going like uh, organized play for Role Master, then we need to just we need to know which setting adventures are in, um, and that's when I realized you know the name for the setting is really more about it's more for the players than for us. So uh, 322. Actually, before I go to 322, I kind of already addressed. Let's see, 325. How prevalent is magic and where does it come from? So the prevalence question is, um, like I said, it's, it's magic is common. And my, the theory of my world crafting for that was actually just reflecting. Oh, wow, that's really interesting. Hmm. So what I was doing was I was reflecting all the profession choices in a role master. So in role master, if you haven't listened to my role master introductory videos, You've got the pure arms classes, the semi-arms classes, which are your half fighter, half mage type people, though they're not all fighters, and your hybrid mages, which are the mages of two different, two of the three different realms, or the third, um, I mean all three, and the pure mage classes. I have my hands are way over here out of the image. Sorry, I talk with my hands anyways. So. Um, what I was doing was I 
said that magic is frequent because if you look at that spread of classes, those professions, almost all of them involve magic to one degree or another. Like just categorically speaking, one out of only 25%, only one of them does not include magic of some type. Which is interesting. The reason why I was like, oh, wait a second, like in the middle of giving, you know, talking through this video, I once argued on uh, the RPG side of Board Game Geek's forum boards that mechanics and setting are separate. That, that they, they can be completely separate. Because... Especially back then, my idea was there's essentially a, a small set of perfect mechanics because they're perfect, or at least as close to perfect as you could actually get. And those are the mechanics you want to use regardless of setting because they're the best. Why would you want to use anything else? So... But it's, so, it's, so it's kind of funny that what I did there was, what's if I'm using these mechanics, how does this make sense in a world? right? So rather than what some people do when they're building a whole new RPG, which includes the setting, and, and for those people who believe that setting is tied to mechanics, they may be looking at, well, this is what I want my setting to do, so how do I reflect that in mechanics? I was actually looking, looking at the mechanics and saying, if this is mechanically true, if these are the physics of the world, so to speak, what does that mean for the world? I kind of went the other direction. So it's interesting that while I at one point argued that these were separate, I actually made them the same in my prevalence of magic. I'm not going to address the second part, where does it come from, because I feel like that's going to send me in a tangent into many other questions that I might just save uh, for later. I think that's all I'm going to put in this video, even though that makes it kind of short, because I want to group some of the other ideas together. So I'm just going to put this out there, and I might make another one here shortly and talk about some of the other ideas. Talk to you guys later.